Hi mathematicians, this is Mr. Almeida and I hope you're doing well today. This video today is going to focus on how we annotate in math class. So you get a lot of word problems in math and um, something you might not think about as being very important, but it actually is, is the ability to read very carefully and to understand what it is that's going on in the problem so that you can understand uh, what it is that uh, you need to know and what it is that you need to be able to do uh, within the context of the problem. So you're very familiar in your English classes, in your English language arts classes, um, with what we call close reading and using annotation strategies that way. Um, the same applies here in math class, uh, but we're going to apply the strategy in a way that makes sense for the task at hand, which is solving problems. Uh, but before we can solve problems, we have to understand what's going on very clearly. This is going to help us to be able to do that. So one of the things uh, that uh, you really have to keep in mind is that um, math class really is a reading class with some problem solving. Uh, so you really have to become a really great reader, and uh, this is going to help you to be able to do that in understanding what you need to do. So the math annotation strategies uh, that uh, are here are meant so that you can understand what's going on in the problem because often um, these important parts that I'm asking you to focus in on are really key information um, that you need to know in order to solve problems. So let's get into what are the actual things that we're looking for as we're reading. So the first thing is uh, we're looking for verbs. Verbs will be uh, very helpful in helping us to understand what is going on in the problem. Now, one thing I do want to caution you on is to not think about verbs as uh, key words um, that mean particular operations. So uh, when you hear more, it doesn't necessarily mean to add. Um, when you hear take away, it doesn't necessarily mean um, that subtraction is going to happen. So you really want to... Uh, understand what the verbs are but at the same time not think that this verb means that I'm going to be doing something in particular alright now that we know that uh, when we read through a word problem or a context we want to circle the verbs so what we're going to do is every time that we see a verb we're going to circle it that's going to help us to understand that this is something that is uh, being done and uh, it'll help us in understanding how all of the actions in the problem are connected to each other. All right, the next thing is um, you're going to draw arrows um, to your nouns from the verbs. So if I see that there is I'm, uh, I'm walking three miles, then I'm going to be um, circling my verb, and I'm going to draw an arrow to the nouns from my verbs. Okay, I'm going to draw an arrow uh, to the nouns from my verbs. And then I'm going to underline important information. So I'm going to always underline the important information. That may be nouns, that might be important words like increase or decrease, um, just words that are going to help me to understand what is actually happening uh, within the problem. And then one thing that is uh, not necessarily focused on, but is crucially important when you get to uh, word problems that involve many different tasks, many things that you're being asked to do, is to number your tasks. So say, for example, you're asked to find uh, the area of a triangle. Uh, that would be number one, because that's the first thing you're being asked to do. Uh, and then if you had another task to do, then you'd label that number two. And these become very helpful in helping you to understand what it is that you need to uh, be able to do. And then uh, one thing that is not here that I'm going to write in right now is these are the annotation strategies. But in terms of my answering the, the actual tasks that I'm being asked to do, I'm always going to write my answers in answer statements. So say I was asked to find the area of a triangle. Um, my answer to that statement would be the area of a triangle is okay and then blank square whatever units they are because area always measures the number of square units that's just an example okay so let me write this in these are the annotation strategies but now my writing strategy 
is going to be to write an answer statement. And the answer statements are going to come from the tasks that I've numbered. What an answer statement basically is, is echoing the question so that I'm not asking it, but I'm stating an answer to that question. Write an answer statement for each task. Okay, so now that I have that down, let us commence with applying this strategy to a word problem. All right, so there is a very uh, lengthy word problem here, but very typical of what you would see if you were asked to write an answer to uh, a constructed response question. So Sam's uh, two new aquariums. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read this problem, and as I read, I'm going to utilize these annotation strategies that I have off to the side. Okay? So Sam's two new aquariums each hold exactly 200 gallons of water. And one thing that I always do is anytime that I come to a punctuation mark or a comma or um, I come across too much information, I always say stop in my mind. So I'm going to say this out loud because I, I want to um, model what it is that I'm thinking as I read through this. Sam's two new aquariums each hold exactly 200 gallons of water. Stop. All right, let me go through this and see if there's important information here. Okay, I see the word, I see the name Sam. So Sam is a person here. Let me scan the problem briefly to see if I see any other names here. All right, there are no other names besides Sam, so that's not important information um, necessarily. But I know that he has two new aquariums, so that's important. Two new aquariums. And each of them hold exactly 200 gallons of water. Not about 200 gallons of water, exactly 200 gallons of water. and each of them hold. Okay, so there's my verb. I drew an arrow to what they hold, and the these are the aquariums that are holding that. Okay? Um, next, one aquarium, so one of the two aquariums, will hold small fish. So one aquarium is going to hold small fish. And the other aquarium will hold large fish. So I begin making sense of, of the information as, as I go through. Um, so I know I have two aquariums. This aquarium right here and this aquarium right here. Now he needs to add, n he needs new fish for his aquariums. Okay. So I know that each is going to hold 200 gallons of water. And one aquarium is going to hold small fish, and the other aquarium is going to hold large fish. Next, he will buy five small fish for every 10 gallons of water in the aquarium. So this is going to go with my small fish, remembering that every, every aquarium is going to have 200 gallons of water. And then he will buy eight large fish for every 40 gallons of water in the aquarium. Remembering also that this aquarium is going to have 200 gallons of water. Now that's all the information in the problem. Now I get to what my tasks are or my questions. So now I'm going to begin to number my tasks. Task 1. And I'm going to put a little line here to show um, a little check mark to, s to show that when I finish that, I'm going to check it off because this becomes my way of checking myself to see if I've actually answered what the questions asked me. So once I've done that, then I check it off. So the first task is, what is the total number of fish Sam will have? The total number of fish Sam will have. Okay, so in terms of my answer statement for this first task, 
The answer to this question right here, what is the total number of fish Sam will have, as an answer statement will be, Sam will have blank number of fish, or Sam will have a total number of blank fish. Sam will have a total of blank fish. This holds me accountable for um, going back to what it is I need to be finding. Okay, so that's the first task. The second part of this is what will the ratio, what will the ratio of Sam's small fish to large fish be? What will be the ratio of Sam's small fish to large fish? So the answer to that question That is my second task, so that's task number two. And let me do this just in a different color, just so you can see that the task is different. You wouldn't necessarily need to do this. All right, the ratio of Sam's small fish Two large fish um, whenever you're dealing with ratio it really is the ratio of the number of Sam small fish to the number of large fish so really I should add that in here but um, if, if you understand what ratio is then you understand this is really asking for the number of small fish to the number of large fish so the ratio of Sam small fish to large fish is and then I'll put that in ratio form, certain number to a certain number, and then period. Okay? The number of small fish to the number of large fish, the number of small fish to the number of large fish right there. Okay? And then my next task is to show or explain. Now, if you're given this option, show or explain, the steps you used to solve this problem. So then here, it's basically asking me to show my thinking. I can say, here's, here's my reasoning, because uh, the steps that you follow are going to allow uh, the reader to see your thought process. Um, so you can say, here's my work. Or here's my reasoning. So I'll write that in here. Here's my reasoning. Or you can say, because the question uh, says steps, you can see here are my steps. It's your choice here. Here's my reasoning, colon. And then you just show your reasoning down here, or the steps that you follow. And then here, in this way, you have read the problem very carefully. You know that this problem is asking you to accomplish three different tasks. Using all of this information that you know here, you'll be able to solve the problem and know exactly what it is that you need to do for the three tasks. You know that you have to find the total number of fish. You know that you have to find the ratio of Sam's small fish to the number of Sam's large fish. And you know that you need to be able to show your, your steps or your reasoning or your work that got you to find these answers right here. In this way, this annotation strategy helps you to fully understand all parts of a word problem and all parts that you need to be able to find to answer the questions. On these um, constructed response questions, you really have to identify what the tasks are and meet all of the criteria. This allows you to find that you are doing everything that the problem is asking you to do and is a great way to hold yourself accountable um, when you're reading. I hope that you enjoyed this video and continue to think about problems very carefully. And remember that math is not just about computation. It really is about reading carefully, especially when we come to these contexts that require us to use mathematical thinking. Have a great day.